Okay, hi guys, and welcome to today's show. Today, you join me here in a dreary, drizzly New York City, and I apologize if the light is terrible and there's uh, the sound of rain beating on my window, but as you guys know, it's my favorite uh, type of weather. But anyway, uh, wristwatch check before we get into the uh, video. I am indeed wearing my darling little SKX. This is the SKX 013. And uh, this is my personally modded version. So, wristwatch check done. What is today's video about? Well, we have not just one, not two, but three micro brands and three watch reviews in this video uh, after the intro, of course. Now, before we get into that, I just want to give a little bit of background uh, to what micro brands are for those of you new into uh, watch collecting and this uh, fantastic hobby of ours. And uh, now micro brands are usually new brands started up most likely by enthusiasts. A lot of them are started on Kickstarter. Now the great thing is about micro brands, they bring something new, something exciting, something specialized, something very personal, something a little bit different from the norm, and an offering from something other than just a nameless, faceless giant corporation. These brands are typically, you know, a one-man operation and you get a very personal experience from them. So, without further ado, let's roll the intro and get into today's video. Today we are finally taking a look at some micro brand watches. Now I selected these three models in particular because I wanted to show you the variation and uh, interesting mix of watches that are available at reasonable prices out there as we speak. Now we'll start with this particular one and this is probably the most traditional out of the three. Well definitely the most traditional out of the three. And this is the track watch by Hemel. Now the first thing you'll notice is that it's heavily uh, military inspired. It's, it's a field watch, but uh, its styling definitely takes uh, cues from the early part of the century. Also has this quite traditional coin edge bezel, but it's done very subtly. The case is this quite interesting kettle shaped case, completely polished. Now you can uh, choose either the polished version or the bead blasted version. It's a 40 millimeter in diameter watch. Uh, it's about 47 millimeters from lug to lug. It has a 20 millimeter lug width, which is just perfect for attaching uh, all your straps to. And it comes on this really well done NATO strap. They've even framed the holes uh, of the NATO strap with steel there. Really nice touch and they've signed it Hemel as well. So the weight of this particular piece is about 88 grams and it really does feel solid. Inside we have the Miyota 9015 which as you guys know is pretty much the standard movement you'll see in a lot of micro brands uh, and that's just basically because it helps to bring the cost down. This particular piece we're talking about I think about $400 and I think it's very reasonable considering also you're getting this beautiful domed sapphire glass. The materials and the finishing is of a really high standard. I, I'm quite impressed at the level of quality to the case. They've even signed the crown there which is a really nice touch. So if we take the NATO strap off the back, there is a sapphire display back which is something you don't typically see at this price range, even the Seikos at this price range usually have hard legs. Unfortunately, the rotor is not customized. They've just left it plain. But I understand, you know, um, the, these kind of little nuances do push up the price. And this is 100 meters water resistant. The Myota uh, 9015, as you see here, so fully automatic, operates at 28,800 vibrations an hour. It's a 24 joule movement and has a 42 hour power reserve. It's a really solid, reliable workhorse movement, very dependable, easy to maintain and to fix and is 
extremely robust. For a watch of this kind of military styling, it's actually very well suited. It's a shame it's not decorated more, but I can understand that Hemel wanted to keep the costs down and offer something affordable but of a high quality. Now taking a closer look at the dial, we have this beautiful glossy piano black dial with very clear Arabic numerals and they are loomed. We have Super Luminova C3 uh, and I'll be sure to include the loom shop. The loom is incredibly responsive and we do have these kind of lance style hands in keeping with the early part of the century style. Beautiful little red second hand. We even have an applied Hemel logo at the top and automatic written very subtly. I really like how it's done. It's beautifully balanced, clean and tastefully done. On the track running around the outside we have uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and then of course 60. We don't have any date uh, which I think keeps it clean. It makes it even more kind of tooly if that makes any sense and keeps the dial very very minimalist and um, attractive. What I like most about this particular watch has got to be this kind of kettle shaped case. Now the first thing I thought when I when I initially saw it was it reminded me of my mother's old Volkswagen Beetle. It has these kind of curves to it and that really illustrates um, just how fitting of that period it is. You know the, these kind of 1930s curves. The benefit of these curves are that the lugs angle down very very nicely and it's I got I got to say it's one of the most comfortable watches I've worn in a long long time. I love the scale of it. In fact, actually let's quickly do a wrist shot. So as you can see on my small wrist it fits really really well. 13 millimeters tall and because of those curved lugs it just hugs the wrist beautifully. I love that black uh, dial and the way the domed crystal kind of plays uh, with those beautiful numerals. It's a very difficult thing to achieve something that is robust, uh, military looking but at the same time remarkably elegant. At first I wasn't a fan of the coin edge bezel but now it's it's really starting to grow on me because it brings just a, a little smidgen, a little uh, hint or dash of elegance, added elegance and we have this kind of uh, almost Toro uh, bastone um, kettle curves uh, that jut out beautifully. The way the glass is actually framed in there by almost the Scotia or a Covetto uh, type bezel is just gorgeous. I really really like that. We have a screw down crown also perfectly proportioned because it's it's very usable and I think fitting uh, to the case. The proportions is something certainly that this watch has got right. These days you know watches are, are far too oversized but I think had this been any bigger it would have lost some of that elegance. Okay so let's summarize the watch. Well first of all it's very impressive uh, specifications and quality for the money. I think for $400 you are getting a really well made watch. Secondly I think the size is perfect, it's spot on, it's tastefully done, it's balance of modernity, uh, of modern, of you know the premium modern materials and it's um, early part of the century styling is spot on. I also think it's very well priced, competitively priced and I think you get a lot for your money, you certainly get your money's worth, that's, that's without a doubt. And lastly I I got to say it's one of the most comfortable watches I've worn in a long time. Uh, it is a little bit on the heavy side uh, at 88 grams but uh, it's just very solid. You're getting a nice hunk of metal and you feel that robustness, you feel that quality off the bat certainly. And I also got to say uh, the this NATO strap it comes with in this beautiful olive green, the stitching, the actual rings, uh, even the attention to detail on the holes with the with framed with steel. It's very well made.